I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior and member of a team. I served the people of the United States and lived the Army, Marine, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade behind. Today we're here to honor six men who will be brought here from uh, Los Angeles County for, through Rose Hills Dignities Mortuary. These men have died alone in Los Angeles and have no family have come forward to claim their remains. We don't know what's happened during their life. We don't know if they've abandoned their family or if their family turned their back on them. Some of them have just flat out lived their family. We do know that during a period of time, they held up their hand and swore to defend this country from all enemies from within and from without. We are here today to honor them for that period of service. They served honorably and earned the right to be treated as a fellow brother that is uh, earned the right to be buried in this national cemetery alongside all the others. Today being buried is Robert Yetman, age 68, United States Army, Vietnam. Norman Bond, age 87, United States Army, World War II. Ronald Rega, age 62, United States Army, Vietnam. Dean Bauer, age 83, United States Army, World War II. Robert Leonard, age 93, United States Army, World War II. Albert Lopez, age 75, United States Army, Vietnam. The list of cremains that have been left here <coughs> at the cemetery during the past week. Uh, these, for those of you who don't know, these are a little different. These are cremains that are dropped off at the office uh, here at uh, Riverside National Cemetery for burial for one reason or another. The families. Uh, hired a mortuary to do the cremation, then never came back, or you know, somehow they may have had a pre-need, they want, requested cremation, but there was no one to take care of them. So those have been searched out and found to be veterans, and they're left here and uh, been buried uh, alongside their brothers and sisters. Joseph Tucker, United States Army, Ralph Cormani, United States Army. Edward Laverio, United States Army. Daniel Trujillo, United States Army. Leonardo Chavez Castillo, United States Army. Francisco Sainz, United States Army. Jose Castro, United States Army. Robert Sutton, United States Army. Wayne Williams, United States Army. Clyde Reed, United States Army. Harry Smith, United States Army. Alfred Solares, United States Army. Lawrence Warner, United States Army, and Pedro Toscano, United States Army.
As I was preparing for this service today and everything, the word honor kept going through my head and celebration. And I think probably a lot of that was because this last weekend we uh, celebrated the death and the resurrection of Christ. And we did that because now we have a uh, opportunity for eternal life. And you know what I got to think about other honors that uh, and the celebrations that we have. And we have <clears throat> like the federal um, honors that we have, and that, like the uh, Martin Luther King Day, we have Washington's birthday, we have Columbus Day, and we have a celebration for the Veterans Day too. You know, And, and all these are, are very, very important to, to us. As you get on down, you get down to the uh, community level, where they, where they honor people that have made the community a better place to live and everything, and we have a parade, or they have just a little banquet or something. Then, you know, and that's very important. Then you get down to more of the individual honors. And that's what we have like today. Where we honor these men that that um, were willing to give their life for this country. And you know, but I can't help but think of how, after all of that, how lonely they had to have been in the last months, weeks, and years, been by themselves. And I, you know, and I know that all of us know to some degree uh, what loneliness is about, whatever is happening in our life. And I know most of us started out when we were like 18, 19, 20 years old. We were in the service, we were overseas. And it was like something like Christmas came along and we were missing our families, we were missing our friends. And some of us were married, missing our wife and maybe a child, everything. And, <clears throat> you know, and that, <clears throat> that loneliness is, is not what these guys went through. The loneliness when you have no hope for the future is just gut-wrenching. And you know, and, and I thought about in the, in the book of Luke, in the Bible, there was a story about a, a man that was a very, very rich man. He had everything he ever wanted and everything. And, he, and there was a beggar outside of his castle door and his name was Lazarus. And all he wanted was just a few crumbs to, to live on and everything. And every day, this rich man would go by him and he would just wouldn't acknowledge him or anything. When Lazarus died, the angels came and received him and took him up to Abraham. When the rich man died, they had a burial for him and he went to a place of torment. And while he was there, he had an opportunity to look up and he saw Lazarus and Abraham. And he begged Abraham for the opportunity to go back and tell his five brothers what it was like and how they should repent for their life so they wouldn't have to live this life of torment. torment. And I can't help but think that maybe if, if these men that we're honored today had the opportunity they'd come back, they would, they would tell us, you know, if, if all possible, make all those amends with your family. Make, make your, if you have a brother that you're separated from or a sister, if you have a, a daughter or, or son that's maybe went by the wayside and everything, that, they, that we should make amends with them because there's nothing lonelier in this world than spending your life, your lifetime without anybody there. So in honor of that, you know, I think that all of us should do that. We should make an attempt to, to make, those, make those amends with everybody so when we die, we'll have that big long line of cars out here. We'll have our family there to, to help us through it. We'll have the Patriot Guard riders there and we'll, we'll, have, we'll have that happen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We want to thank you for this opportunity to honor you and to honor these men that were willing to die for this country. We pray, Lord, that as we go together and around and everything, that you'll watch over all of us so we have safe trip to, trips and everything during this uh, bad weather. We say this prayer in your son's name. Amen. 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 <coughs> so this past weekend, being Easter, uh, I'm, and now today we're celebrating the lives of these men that lived their life. Hopefully they lived full lives. But it's, it's, we're here to be with them. 
and Tony Blair addressing the House of Commons or the House of Lords or the combined houses one time, said there's two people who has stepped forward in the history of the world to offer their lives for you. Jesus Christ and the American soldier. So that kind of tells you where the American soldier stands with the rest of the world. He was just a common soldier, and his ranks are growing thin. But his presence should remind us we may need his life again. For when countries are in conflict, that we find the soldier's part is to clean up all the troubles that the politicians start. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Perhaps just a simple headline in a paper that would say, Our country is in mourning. A soldier died today. Thank all of you for being here.